Welcome to the Community Baptist Church live stream. I want to say thank you so very much for joining us today as we get ready to study through the book of Revelation, chapter number 17. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to each and every one who came out tonight to help decorate the church for Christmas. The church looks absolutely beautiful, and I hope that each and every one of you enjoy it on Sunday. I want to say thank you again for taking the time out of your schedule to watch this uh, broadcast. This broadcast is pre-recorded and is not live, um, but I do want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to watch it today. Let's get started this evening with the word of prayer. We've got many to be in prayer for, many on our personal prayer list that is sick and afflicted, and many more that we need to keep in prayer today. And I want to encourage you to do that. Let's go to the Lord in a moment of prayer. My dear Grace J. Father, Lord, I want to thank you for another opportunity to come and gather around your word today. Lord, I pray that you would touch and help as we do this podcast or broadcast this evening. And Lord, I pray that something that is said and done will bring glory and and honor to you. Lord, we pray that you would give us the understanding that we need as we teach through the book of Revelation chapter number 17 tonight. Lord, we pray that if there be anyone here that's lost and undone without you, that you would save them before it's eternally too late. God, for those that are sick and afflicted tonight, Lord, we pray that you would touch them and help them and heal them, God, if it be thy will. And all these things we ask in Christ's name. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. I want to say thank you again for everything that you do for your support. And uh, as we do these broadcasts on video, I know it's not the same as meeting in the church, but I hope that you take time to learn from it as well. If you have your Bibles tonight, go with me to Revelation chapter number 17 tonight. Revelation chapter number 17. I will be... Um, reading quite a few of my notes tonight as we put this broadcast together. So I hope that you will uh, bear with us on that. All right. Revelation chapter number 17 and verse number 12. Uh, last week we dealt with the, <clears throat> excuse me, we've been dealing with the Babylonian monster or the monster of Babylon. And last week I had us looking at, as we looked at, uh, Babylon, I had us look at her, um, I've lost my place in my notes, sorry about that, the advent of the beast. And tonight, I want us to look at the advancement of the beast, the advancement of the beast tonight. And we'll be in verse number 12. And the Bible says in verse number 12, "...in the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour." With the beast. And tonight, as we look at the advancement of the beast, we see that the kings of the earth cannot resist him and unanimously give their power to him, acclaiming him as their Lord. Whatever you say, we will do. Whatever you want us to do, we will do. And I want to say today, friend, that that is a dangerous place um, to be by giving that power to the beast. Uh, the beast is not someone that you'd want to give that power to. It is a sad state of affairs that we've got people uh, in government today that will bow to other dignitaries across the world and want to give their power, want to give our weapons to the enemy. We shouldn't do that. But it's a foretelling and a foreshadowing of what we are of what they will see happen here in the latter part of the tribulation. John tells tonight in verse number 12 that the hell that, or excuse me, they will be hailing the Babylonian monster. When I think about that, I remember Adolf Hitler. Everybody had something to say when they would say, Hail Hitler. And tonight, the Babylonian monster, the monster of Babylon, the Antichrist, will be held. First of all, he will be held because each and every one will be united, acknowledging his lordship. As we see here in verse number 12, the nations of Europe will be united at last in a ten kingdom federation under the beast. We are not told how Europe and possibly 
all of the Western world will fall into this 10 nation pattern. But we do know that when t- the time comes, the war, uh, excuse me, when the time comes, when the time comes, all petty differences will be submerged into an enthusiastic, wholehearted endorsement of the Antichrist. And he will submerge as the supreme head or emerge as the supreme head of the federations. The ten nations will be quite sure that they are acting uh, sovereignly and that the federation is the crowning achievement of their own diplomacy. But the whole thing is really brought about by the will of God, the God that they ignore. They would rather give their attention, their time, their effort, and their kingdom to a false God, an antichrist, than to the real God. Why is that? Because their hearts are darkened. They had no desire for God before the tribulation. They'll have no desire for God during the tribulation. Not only will they acknowledge his lordship, but secondly tonight, they will acknowledge his leadership. Preacher, how do you see that they'll acknowledge his leadership? Go with me tonight to verse number uh, 13 tonight, verse number 13 uh, tonight, as we get to verse number 13. The Bible says, these have one mind, excuse uh, Yeah, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength to the beast. And as we see that tonight, go with me to verse number 14. These shall make war with the lamb. Notice this capital L. The lamb is the Lord. The lamb is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it said, and the lamb shall overcome them. We have to remember that when he was crucified, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. And this time he will overcome the Antichrist and his followers. For he is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen. And I like this last part, and faithful. The kings of the earth will follow the beast, his insane hatred of the Son of God. The beast has one of the infatuations that is a strike at the lamb. It in, in that, he is similar to King Saul, whose hatred of David grew and grew and grew until it dominated everything that he did. His life at last became nothing and unrelenting unrelenting, and a ruthless crusade to persecute David and anyone who took David's side. To the end, he harnessed all the resources, manpower of his kingdom. It will be the same way for the beast, his hatred for the Lamb of God. Even through the final outcome is not a moment in question. The beast struts across the stage of human history as a great king, but against him comes the Lamb, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the deluded leaders of the nations who accept this leadership of the beast and have endorsed his hatred of God will discover too late they have made a fatal choice. I want to say this today. Not only will the kings do that, but there will be people that do that. There are people today, there are men and women today who have chosen to hate the very man who came to this world to save them from their sins. Jesus said, I come to seek and to save those which are lost. They that are holding me, not a physician, but they that are sick. I want to say today, each and every man, woman, boy, and girl stands in need of a Savior. And today, if you reject Him as your personal Lord and Savior, you're no different than these kings. You're no different than the Antichrist who rejects Him who rejects his mercy, who rejects his grace, uh, who rejects his lordship. I know the Antichrist is not someone who will have the opportunity to be saved. I totally understand that. But I want to tell you today, sinner friend, every time you reject Christ, you're no different than the Antichrist. You are no different than the devil himself who hates God, who hates the things of God. You say, preacher, that's hard. That's cruel. No, it is true. And one day the Lamb will overcome, regardless whether you say, Lord, I want you to come into my heart and life, and I want you to save me, and I want you to be the Lord of my life, or at the day that 
every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I would rather confess Him as Lord on this side of eternity than to confess Him as Lord on the other side of eternity as He cast me into the lake of fire. What sad day that'll be. Secondly today, not only do we see the hell of the Babylonian monster, but secondly today I see the hate of the mother of Babylon. The hate of the mother of Babylon. There's three reasons they will hate the mother of Babylon. As we have studied, we know that the mother of Babylon sits in the middle of Rome. And there's a few things that I want to give you that they will hate about her. Let's go to verse number 15 tonight. First of all, there's practical reasons. The Bible says, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Verse number 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. The kings of the earth will hate this woman because she represents a threat to their own power. She wields an authority that they feel rightly belongs to them. It was one for them to court the whore, to use the Babylonian religious system to expedite the unification of the empire, to tolerate her and her political meddling. Once the end has been achieved, another is another matter. The religious system is soon and becomes an unwanted encumbrance. And the beast himself has other ideas about the kind of religion suitable for mankind. There are a lot of people today that thinks that there's another kind of religion. We don't need another kind of religion. We need salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. Religion is man-made. Think about that tonight. Religion is man-made, but salvation is of the Lord. Think about that. Moving on, the kings of the earth in a coming day following the lead of the greatest Caesar of all of them, will climb thus to the pinnacle of the worldly ambition. They will use Rome, will be a mighty useful ladder for their climb. But it will be a positive encumbrance once the goal is reached. The kings have no plans for ever climbing down again. If they come down, it will be a violent overthrow, not by humble descent at Rome's expense. So we see the practical reasons that they hate her. Secondly, tonight, why do they hate her for the practical reasons? Because, number one, she's detested. The Bible says in verse in the previous verse, in verse number 15, And he said, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore. First of all, she is detested. The honeymoon between the whore and the kings of the earth does not last long. Secondly, she's despoiled by the kings. They make her desolate. Thirdly, she's disgraced by the kings. They make her naked. They expose all of her moral vileness to public view. One can well imagine all the scandals are exposed. Then she is devoured by the kings. They eat her flesh. They glut themselves upon tearing out her vital organs. The Roman system ceases to exist as such, and the kings of the earth feed their own imperial hungers upon all that made her. Finally, she is destroyed by the kings. They burn her with fire. When they have finished, with her, when they are finished with her, there's nothing left at all. Thus, for very practical fur- purposes, they make an end to the religious system centered at Rome by burning her down. You think about this tonight. Think how many Christians, real Christians, was burnt by fire at the hands of the Catholic Church. And as you think about this tonight, it comes right back around that Rome will be burning again in her own filth and ruin. 
You think about that. A place that has tons of power, tons of money, a lot of many different things will be burnt at the end of time. Secondly, tonight, not only do we see the practical reason, but secondly, tonight, I want us to look at the providential reason that she is burnt or why she is hated. Preacher, why is that? For God, verse 17, hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Nothing could be further from the minds of these kings than to be fulfilling the divine will of God. But God makes even the wrath of man to praise him. For centuries, this evil system has flourished, developed, expanded, and prospered. Now, by a sovereign act of God, it's all over. The most insolent, daring, blasphemous, and powerful coalition of nations ever brought together by a godless, wicked man is shown here to be a mere tool in the hands of God to wreak his vengeance upon that which he has provoked, his wrath for centuries. God may not have stopped them from being prosperous. God may not have stopped them from blaspheming. God may not have stopped them from a lot of things, but they will not stop God when God says, enough is enough is enough. Sinner friend today, as we study the ending of this book of Revelation, you must remember God may not stop you from committing murder. God may not stop you from lying. God may not stop you from cheating. God may not stop you from stealing. God may not stop you from a lot of things. But when the judgment hand of God is ready to be poured out upon your life, you will not stop Him. It is important that you confess your sins to a thrice and holy God. And say, God, forgive me, for I am a sinner that stands in need of you. And God, I'm asking you to come into my heart and my life and save me before it's everlastingly too late. Because I don't want to face your judgment. Instead, I want to accept your grace. Grace that is greater than all of our sin. Thirdly, tonight and lastly, and I'm done. Not only do they hate her, For her practical reasons, not only do they hate her, for her providential reasons. Lastly, tonight, they hate her for her political reasons. Why is that? The Bible says in verse number 18, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. They hate her because of her claimed right to rule the nations. For centuries, not a nation in Europe stirred without a nod from the Vatican. In recent years, Rome's political power has been curbed, and she had to trim her sails and to suit an adverse wind. But she has not relinquished her claims, and although she was has been muted for now, she has not abandoned her claims. This temporal power grew gradually through the passing of time. When we think about this now, the the Pope uh, Gregory. The seventh said that um, the, the founding of the Roman Empire was holy. When we think about this tonight, the Bible says, And thus great city still reigneth over the kings. In a coming day, the habit of opportunist intrigue, so characteristic of the woman, will lead her into an alliance with the last of Caesars, the Antichrist. She will think she can control him, only to find too late that he has used her for his own good. The the tribulation records her last meddling in political affairs of men. So much then the Babylonian system. Then we get into next week, Lord willing, In chapter number 18, it will be another recorded, pre-recorded service because the church will be hosting the trail off ceremonies and the banquet for that. But next week, we'll be getting into how the Babylonian city becomes power, prosperous, and then it falls. And as we look at that, I hope you'll study Revelation chapter number 18. 
uh, for next week. Again, I want to say thank you so very much for watching the service tonight, and we hope that something that was said was a blessing and a help to you. Let's close with a moment of prayer tonight. My dear Grace, Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this day that you've blessed us with. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for each and every one that watched this watch this service tonight. We pray that you will touch them and help them and meet their needs according to your will and according to your glory. And all these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon until we meet again.